Mm-hmm. Oh, hey. Hi, hello. Welcome back, Alexandrine Codex. Love thyself, a Horatio story. I wake up with the start. <laughs> I had a strange sensation. A dream? A dream in which everyone was wearing the same face. Smiled and snarled at each other in the same breath. You're all playing a part in some big play, and I seem to be the only one to not know my lines. If my mask fell off, I died. I sigh heavily and push myself off the mattress, stagger off the bed, put my hands on each side of the sink. Look into the mirror hollow screen. The dream was real. I feel the strong urge to puke. I clench my hands on the side of the sink until my knuckles are as white as the faux porcelain and breathe as deeply as I can. Feeling passes, I open my eyes again. I notice there's a blinking icon flashing on the hall screen and it expands when I press it until it covers half the screen. Breakfast, mess hall, classes, academy auditorium 3, lunch, mess hall, extracurriculars, specific, dinner, mess hall, advanced classes, specific. Breakfast is grayed out and classes is bolded. Looks like I'm late on my first day of class. Bolt out the door, run like my life depends on it. It does. Sorry I'm late. Grand Headmaster. You are indeed late, first level initiate. Seems the redesign of the station altered it enough that fresh initiates do not find corresponding plans in their memories. Still, the last year classmates arrived ten minutes ago. Have a seat. In the future, you will arrive on time. Initiate Alexius F21. I scurry to my seat in the back. Against my better judgment, my ears and cheeks have turned a very nice shade of pink. I can hear classmates snicker. I sink into the deep comfort of the chair and try to ignore the burning sensation. My stomach adds its groans to the chorus. This is just great. Eternus, P02, gestures to the hollow screen behind him. Moving on. Over the next three weeks, you will undergo an accelerated program. You would better not miss a class. Subjects covered will be, amongst others, starts listing off subjects in rapid fire monotone that's hard to follow. I make out a few words History of Horatio in the last 100 years, Astral Cartography, Egotiation, Etiquette, Startup, Imperialism, Dance, Belaying. Personal grooming, speech, craft, xenobiology, dealing with lessers, Horatiology, cooking, reception protocol, fencing, Horatio resources, perfumes, genomic inference, <laughs> inference, hand to hand combat, social hygiene, sublight navigation, logistics, gore economics, cloning 101, personal disruption, surveillance, xenopolitics, imperial maintenance, fleet maneuvers, spacecraft care 101, aerobics, and guns. For a start, I frown. Sounds like an eclectic mix. I have a feeling that simply repeating this list will take up most of the three weeks at our disposal. We will begin with an all-time personal favorite, personal grooming. My classmates let out appreciative ahs and approving nods at the subject choice. Next up is a very detailed anatomical representation of a ratio. Eternus P02 begins. Melodious chimes sound off in the distance. Heads perk up and look around. Ah, uh, time flies when we're having fun. I did not have fun. I tried my best to pay attention. Truly, there would be so much much there would be so much more to say. There's a lot of course material. We'll get to some of it later, but for now, it's time for you to get to lunch. This afternoon, you'll be assigned your first extracurricular activities. This will be assigned to you based on personal affinities. I will see you all, he pauses for dramatic effect, tomorrow. Same place, same time. Do not be late. A passing glance in my direction is all the confirmation I need. I look away with a detached air and avoid making eye contact. Back in the mess hall, seems Slop is back as well. I sigh. Can't tell if I've had better because obviously I'm pretty sure these aren't fine foods that we're supposed to be enjoying. Faces around me are a mix of resignation and grumpiness, confirming my hunch. Ain't no one liking the grub here. I shuffle along the line with my tray. The same Horatio I saw yesterday hands me a bowl of the same slop. I sigh again. 
Horatio Lunch person hears it and his expression changes. Hey, you think this is enjoyable for me? It isn't. I look at him. You wouldn't happen to have anything to make this taste a little better. Anything? He considers this for a moment and snatches a little spice shaker from the counter and hands it to me. You can always sprinkle this on top. Pour a little what turns to be a pungent red powder on my food. I stop, look at my bowl, then add a little more. And a little more still. Soon my bowl is covered in a thin layer of red. Lunch person looks bemused. That should be enough, buddy. Okay, thanks. I hand back the spice shaker and go find a seat. Did he just give me, like, pepper? Or, like, <laughs> like chili pepper? I sit with other people, encouraged by what could be very possibly be my first conversation. I look to find a seat with other people. I find a table with an empty spot. When I put my tray down, the conversations go quiet and faces turn toward me. One of them pipes up. Well, if it isn't the late Alexius F21. I realize my mistake, pick up my tray and go sit on my own. <laughs> I'll find no camaraderie from my classmates now that I've been made the class dunce. I dip my fork into the bowl and give the new, improved formula a taste. It's... it's actually pretty good. A rich taste of... with something, or the other just unexpectedly warms up and explodes with flavor. Look at my bowl, full of gratitude for the... lunch... Or the Horatio lunch person. I smile at him and give him a thumbs up. He nods at me and cocks an eyebrow. I shovel big spoonfuls of delicious slop into my face, barely chewing on it. Then, the spice hits me. My tongue, my tongue, my tongue suddenly becomes very, very hot. It takes me a moment to realize what's happening. By the time I do, my mouth is fully engulfed in what feels like fire. I'm doing my best to choke on this food quietly, fighting back the tears. Horatio behind the counter is laughing heartily. He did it to me on purpose. Ignore him. I do my best to ignore him. It's not too difficult. My eyes are blurry with tears. I put my tray in the return area and leave the mess hall with all the dignity that I can muster. Wander back to my room. I can feel a trail of fire down my throat and into my stomach. I wash my face at the sink and slowly regain composure. Schedule on my hall pad switches from lunch to extracurriculars. A little pop-up menu indicates I'm having imperial maintenance in the kitchen. Not sure what this is about, but I know I don't want to be late to it, or anything ever again. I trot out of my room. I get to the mess hall minutes later. Running was not a good idea. My stomach is vehemently protesting as I look around for, I guess, the rest of the class? The other students assigned here? I'm not sure how things work. The place is now entirely deserted, which feels strange. Nobody but me. I'm about to walk out and look for a hall pad to check my schedule while I hear a call. <laughs> they assigned you! What a coincidence! I turn around, it's the lunch person who tricked me. He's waving me over from behind the counter. Come over here! Imperial maintenance, huh? Must have imperially pissed someone off. I get around the counter and back into the kitchen. This place is a mess. I stand in front of him, my face a carefully composed mask. The fact that my food is still churning in my stomach doesn't help me. I feel queasy. Oh come on, don't be like that, it's just a harmless prank. I couldn't know you were already on someone's shit whiz. I look at him, frowning. Something's not right in my belly, it feels like it's trying to crawl back up. Oh, you probably didn't know. Well, Imperial Maintenance is basically the janitorial duties are all yours. Nobody wants to push them up for a living, so it's dished out as a punishment. It looks like you and me are in cleaning duty today. I'm about to speak up when a sudden urge to retch overpowers me. I vomit on the floor. And this is where you'll start. I hate the feeling. I have to say I'm immediately relieved. Red firegrass will do that to you when you put on too much. I did kind of set you up for it. Sorry. He hands me a dishcloth, which I wipe my mouth with. I'm Darian, F-19 by the way, second level initiate Megrez Darian, F-19. Alexius, first level initiate Megrez Alexius, F-21. His hand is still open toward me, looking intently at me. 
I place my hand in his and squeeze, feeling like it's the appropriate thing to do after introductions. He looks taken aback. His hand is warm and limpy in my warm and limp in my clammy fingers. The experience is deeply uncomfortable. Oh, okay. I'm not sure what I was trying to do here. We let go. I grab a mop and a bucket and set about cleaning my mess. F-19 surreptitiously snatches this cloth from the countertop I've left it on. He does his best to look like he's cleaning, but after a couple of glances at him, it's clear he's just puttering about. From time to time, he gets looks back on how I'm getting on. Once I'm more or less done, he turns to me. Yep, I think we're pretty much done here, don't you think? What do you mean? Well, I don't know about you, but I've got places to be. Better things to do than pushing a mop around. We could just call this a day and go about our lives. How does that sound? Will we get caught? I'm not exactly popular right now. He laughs. Having had this laugh directed at me just minutes ago, I'm not sure how to take it. Right, you're on the shit list. Let me show you how things work around here. He walks up to a wall-mounted hall pad and starts typing around for flicking windows until he finds the one he's looking for. Uh, there, see, Imperial Maintenance Kitchen, our names. It's basically low-level schedule. Well, if you put your hand on the biometric scanner here and click edit, you can, uh... Well, you can just remove us from this. Extra extracurricular my smooth ass. I have to admit, I'm impressed. But that really works. I gotta tell you something, something you may not have realized yet. The security features are here to protect the Empire from its undesirables. They're not exactly geared to protect it from insiders who might have different inclinations. He turns to me. What do you say? Are we done here? I consider my options. Yes, we're done here. You know what? I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be learning here. You said it. I'm not going to stay here and push a mop around. Right on. He pushes a few buttons on the hollow pad and a moment later turns back to me. The work here is done. Let's go. He moves the weave and I follow. I notice he's still carrying the dishcloth with him, which I do find pretty gross. This should buy us a couple of hours. Nobody will check in on us because he leans in conspiratorially. They all think they've got better things to do too. We exit the same way we came in, through the mess hall. Darian F-19 is walking a couple of steps ahead of me. Seeing as I personally didn't have any decimation in mind, I'm tagging along. Notices stops and turns around. L listen, friend, I've got places to go, people to be. Let's keep this casual, shall we? Oh. By the time I process I'm being dismissed, he's rounded a corner of the hallway and disappeared. Explore on my own. Decide that, well, if he's got things to do, just have to find my own fun. Start walking in another direction, aimlessly, for sure, as I have no idea where most of these always lead. Nonetheless, I try to maintain the arrogant outward attitude of every me. After a few minutes of aimlessly wandering, my steps take me back to the concourse. It's almost empty compared to the first time I saw it. Still murmurs of distant conversation, echoing footsteps, light filtering from outside, all of it contributes to giving this place an air of reverence. Try not to gawk as I walk around. Really growing trees, fountains, and water pieces with running water, all of this contributes to paint a picture of an empire built on boundless pride. We are, I'm pretty sure, one small mistake from a tragic accident here. Glass ceiling were to shatter, boundless arrogance, or endless optimism. Probably a bit of both. I hear footsteps rapidly approaching and startle as if I was caught something, doing something illegal. Thought crimes. Thankfully, nobody can hear what's going on in my head. Can they? I look discreetly over my shoulder and recognize Extras B12, Master Sergeant. It's in an agitated conversation with... I think it was Turgus F07, Lab Tech. Here are some of their exchanges. They get closer. What do you mean you don't know where he is? I'm his instructor, same as you. I'm not here to track brothers at your convenience. If you, of all of his siblings, haven't kept on piling sanctions on him to build character, he might have had more assiduous, been more assiduous in his attendance. Extras B-12 comes to an abrupt stop a couple of meters away from me and turns to face Turgus F-07, practically shouting in his face. This is important. 
Well, I'm sorry I can't help you. Not only is this not my expertise, but I have prior engagements. I don't get it. It's blowing up ships and showing Eternus P-02 your worth. Showing. He was lucky to be selected for fleet maneuvers in the first place. Who wouldn't jump at the chance? Looks like he wouldn't. Extra speed 12 stomps off down the hallway. Turgus F-07 turns round in dignified, rigid posture, mutters in the general direction of the Master Sergeant. I'm almost late for my picnic now. Where's this greenhouse? Ah, that way. He walks away at a leisurely pace. Fleet maneuvers? Sounds like an advanced class. Could be a way to blow things up, take the pressure off, or a way to try and fit in, show what I'm worth. On the other hand, a picnic. What to do? Oh, uh, fleet maneuver sounds useful. Greenhouse is pretty. Uh, blow things up and have fun. Yeah, fleet maneuvers can't possibly miss an opportunity like that. Take off in the direction the master sergeant went. I catch up with him. Master sergeant, extra B twelve, sir. I couldn't help but overhear your short on personnel. I want in. Lexus F twenty one, right? True. That we are a me short. One of the cadets scheduled to take part in the advanced class has missed the last exercise and nowhere to be found. If you want to replace him, simply do as you're told in all circumstances. How familiar are you with Imp Mark 43 armament systems and controls? Uh. Just a little. Of course, your imprinting only covers models as far as the Imp Mark 41, right? Well, I remember having to learn about that stuff too. Well, nothing revolutionary compared to what you're familiar with. You'll figure it out. Starts walking again, and I follow. Before long, we're led to a small door leading to the command deck of a battleship? Extra Speed 12 notices my gaping and awe and chuckles. Impressive, huh? Yes, I suppose you wouldn't have seen a hull room before. Technology is pretty new. This one here reproduces all manner of spaceship decks. For training purposes, it was commissioned roughly a decade ago after the Invictus fleet incident. Live exercise were deemed too costly by the administration. Officially, this is Hall Room Training Hall Training Room 15 for deckside fleet maneuvers, but we've taken to calling it simply the Battle Bridge. Get in, your classmates are already here. Battle Bridge. Got it. He steps inside, ducking a little to get through the door, a regular-sized frame with a couple of crisscrossing hollow lines tracing the shape of a hatch. It appears wholly unnecessary, but I'm guessing it's a habit from served on several real ships. I follow suit and duck through the door. Not sure why I did that, but maybe it made me look more professional. Master Eternus, P-02, steps out from behind a huge console. Look what the star tide washed in. Lexus F-21, what brings you here? I open my mouth to answer, but Master Sergeant cuts me short. Grand Headmaster, the cadet offered to replace Darian F-19, who's nowhere to be found and hasn't answered any summons. What a disappointment. Yeah, you believe this one will prove as talented with weapon systems, but more assiduous? B-12 looks at me before turning back to face Eternus P-02. I have full confidence in any brother from the Megres batch. Sure beats having to man that station myself anyway. Not the resounding endorsement I was hoping for, but it'll do. Make sure he does not do anything stupid. Uh oh. Master Sergeant directs towards me a gigantic battle station, wide seat, and a whole array of panels, commands, and knobs. And this is your station. Please be seated. New headrest feels nice, huh? Mark 43 series has moved the controls around a bit, so weapon systems have shifted somewhat. Point defense guns are at your left, laser and beam triggers in the middle. Missiles have been simplified compared to what you know, so it's really point and shoot now with this stick controller. What's this panel? Ah, uh, this is boarding pod controls. They're not part of the doctrine right now, so you won't need to use them. Too much reticence among the crew to endanger one's face in close corners in battle. Yeah, alright, checks out. They're not even manned. Got it. Any questions? I'm good. Excellent. Let's get started. He straightens up and moves towards Eternus P-02. Ready to start, sir. 
Excellent. Load simulation Kobayashi so fun. It's like Kobayashi Maru, but it's different. Okay, uh, alright. Extra B12 gives Eternus P02 a long, sidelong look. Are you sure they're ready, sir? You heard me? Let's get started. Sit rep. Voices rise from across the room. Communications ready. Damage control ready. Engineering ready. Fleet command ready. Navigation ready. Scan view ready. Security ready. Strike wing ready. All around me are familiar faces. All around me are familiar faces. Intent gazes. Focused faces. <laughs> they all seem to know what they're doing. Put on my most convincing game phase and grab the control. Weapon systems ready. Not sure how long this has been going on, but what I know is that it hasn't been going well. Our fleet's objective is to intercept and destroy an exploration vessel sent by the Sophon Republic. The objective would be straightforward enough if that vessel weren't followed closely by what seems to be the entire Republic's fleet. Most of our own fleet has been disabled or destroyed by what feels like an altogether preposterous amount of firepower. Most of our systems are down, strike craft are in complete disarray, missiles are all but gone, and energy weapons cannot accumulate enough power for a shot. Put it mildly, we are in trouble. As the instructor now responsible for cadet military training, Extra Speed 12 is visibly under a lot of stress. Nonetheless, he is trying his hardest to make us fulfill objectives of the mission. We command, launch a pincer maneuver. Impossible, sir. Our last Machio frigate was disabled in the last hit. That's the whole fleet gone. I'm out. Cadet station turns dark, joining strike wing and engineering. Sir, our sensors have picked up activation of a cloaking device on the enemy scout. Lost firing solution. Firing solution, my smooth ass cadet. Our tubes are empty, our guns are cold. This is a firing problem we're having. Shoots me a grim look. Been a little trigger happy with the missile, sure. I hit my targets and I can't be faulted for shooting at the opposition. Pretty sure I'm the only reason we're afloat. The lights flicker and a low rumble shakes the room. It's another direct hit, sir. Shields are down. Damage control goes dark, too. I think the Master Sergeant is about to call it when I have an idea. Doomed anyway, might as well try it. Might fail, but we're already failing, so what hurt can it cause? I switch on internal communicator. Weapon system to security. Get your marines to boarding pods. Stat. What? No time to explain. Send every me who can hold a rifle. Now. Roger that. I hear the cadet relay the order and watch my console at the boarding pods start coming online and firing up. Weapon system to navigation. Bought a course that will allow the direct firing of pods at the enemy flagship. Why are you doing that? They're not the target. I know. Do as you're told. Extra B12 backs me up. Follow his lead. I'm sure you... I sure hope you know what you're doing. Look at, look at me. I'm the captain now. Uh, there, there's some good jokes in this. <laughs> Bearing 335 weapon systems. Your firing solution is coming up. I look at my console. I have six boarding pods full of marines too precious to be willing to carry a gun in normal circumstances, and I'm about to fire them straight at an enemy carrier. Smash the launch button and the boarding pods blast off the side of the ship. Open a line to the marines inside. Listen up, brothers. It's my understanding the troops aboard Sofon flagship are tiny nerds that are full two heads shorter than you. They cannot reach the face of even the hunchbacks amongst your lot, so don't worry about getting them scratched. That's a pie, may his force be with you. Watch anxiously as the pods reach the point defense line of the enemy carrier. A pod explodes into a shower of sparks, then another, but four of them get through and smash into the hull. I hear combat chatter on the comms. Marines, head to the bridge. It's no time for caution. Give it all you've got. Go! I listen, listen anxiously for sounds of progression. The cries of dying marines and wounded Zenuglis subside. Weapon systems, this is Marine Leader. We've seized the bridge of the enemy flagship, disabled the doors. We have control of the ship. For now, get a hold of their sensors. Can you locate the scout cloak scout on it? it? Should be clear as day to their own fleet. Aye aye. Yes, we have it on our starboard. It's attempting to escape. 
Get a lock, activate all weapon systems you can find. We're not trained to use soap on ships, sir. Then figure it out. I cut the line and watched the screen above my head with mounting anxiety. After a moment, a single missile leaves Sofon Torpedo Bay and cruises towards an empty space. An intense explosion follows. We did it, sir! The lights have turned back on and the stations are all lit up again. Extra B12 is a confused smile on his face. We did it! We did it! Takes me a few seconds to remember where I am. This was just an exercise. I'm <laughs> drenched in sweat nonetheless. Extras B-12 comes up to my station, beaming. Congratulations, Eclexius F-21. You beat the Kobayashi Sofan. He leans forward and adds more quietly. In all my years, I've never seen a cadet crew able to defeat it. I was convinced it was conceived as a no-win scenario to test our brother's metal in the face of certain death, or worse, possible disfigurement. He straightens up and concludes. I'm very impressed. Eternus P-02 appears, seemingly out of thin air. Yes, this was unorthodox, but efficient. Good work. Might make a cadet out of you yet. Anything to serve his empire, sir. I'm smiling from ear to ear, flushed with pride. I get up from my station, pretend shrugging the compliments away. I notice my comrades in arms aren't sharing the ambient glee. I'm guessing that single-handedly pulling off victory from the jaws of defeat doesn't look too good in the dog-eat-dog -dog world. Filter out of the battle bridge, I saunter back home, exhausted, but in all, all in all, pretty happy with my day. Kobayashi's so fun. Such a fucking great name. Um, I think sleep and then put in the cut. Yeah, that makes sense. I've never been happier to see my bed. I dive face first into it and instantly fall asleep. Oh, okay, yeah. Guess, guess I'll put in the cut here because it's been about half an hour and that's a day. So, uh, hey, another one will be up tomorrow probably. Till then, toodaloo, take care. See you then. Buh bye bye. Oh, wah, wah.